Hi there. So my name is David and I am an ESL instructor currently working at uh, American Academy of English. I enjoy teaching English. I really find it fun to teach uh, foreign language learners, or really anybody, uh, at any level. I've adopted several kinds of styles of teaching uh, adapted to various age groups. For little kids, I teach them differently the way I would teach adults. <laughs> Currently, I'm teaching two primary school classes. All right, push her all the way back. Very good, very good. Okay, Shakula. Woo! Doll. 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 Three, two, one, go. Three. Unbelievable. Okay, you need the simple past, one vocab word. There is. Make it neat, on the line, statement not a question. And also I'm teaching two adult level classes. What comes next? I will need you to face this glass plate right over here. Along with an SAT class. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so now we've answered the question why the null results were forcibly suppressed or squelched. Okay. Uh, Journals were probably just not interested, and some of them, some of the reason why was because scientists just believed there was a TOEFL class. Where are you going today? Good. Let's break it down. WH word. A WH word. Repeat. Uh huh. Subject. Good. Subject noun or pronoun? And also a regular uh, ESL course for a middle school student. Drive a car to the airport. Okay. To the place. Mail thing. Place. Place. Uh, drive a car to the airport. Drive a car in the airport. In an airport? Uh, uh, in an airport or to the airport? Oh, to the to airport. The airport. But what I love about English is that there's just so much to learn and uh, so many ways to teach it. Uh, my educational background. Boss. Drive five blocks. Good. Okay, so. One. I spent two years in a community college called Rio Hondo College. I transferred to the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA. I am a very proud Bruin. And I graduated with a BA in philosophy. I've been teaching in China for many, many years now. And I graduated UCLA in June 2012. So then a month later, I went on a trip with my family to China. Uh, this was my second time going. I went previously in 2010 just to visit, but this time I involved myself in a summer program at a primary school called uh, the Quixi Experimental Middle School, and I taught an ESL summer camp there. I taught oral English to 6th and 7th graders, and this was in China, Zhejiang province, and in the city of Tongxiang. And in October 2014, I returned to China, and not far away from the summer camp, I taught in a city called Hainin, and I taught the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And then in September 2015, they decided to renew another contract all the way up until June 2016. So I was teaching in, I guess you could say, northern China, but I wanted to get some experience in a different area. And I had met my girlfriend at the time, and, and we both decided it might be a good idea to see how things are down south. So we went to Guangzhou. And we're ready to roll. We have a one. What? You roll the pronoun die. Okay, it's I, and go! And uh, in Guangzhou, I signed up with a company called American Academy of English, or in short, AAE. And I've been there since October 2016th, and I'm still here right now, currently in my office. And uh, I love this office. It really added a lot of artistry to it. <laughs>
and I'll be here all the way till November 14th of this year, 2018. Uh, that's the date at which I have my plane ticket, and I'll be back in America, in Los Angeles. Uh, so I've had a lot of experience uh, teaching and working with little kids. Okay, so I'm going to read you a children's book called Dan's Game. So, it's a story by Roseanne Lanskak Williams. One day in June, Dan got up late. He saw the time. He was late for a date. The baseball game was about to begin. If he were late, would the team win? He put on his pants. He put on his hat. He ran to his bike. The tire was flat. Leap came along. He came in the gate. I have a plan. You won't be late. Take my skates, Leap said to Dan. I'm sure you will make it. I know you can. They raced ahead. Leap helped Dan skate. They made the game. They were not late. The game was great. Dan hit the ball. They all had fun, but that's not all. Dan went home. He did not rest. He made a cake. Leap is the best. Normally in a class, I would like to go over the parts of speech. I'd like to break into the phonics. So typically when I teach phonics, I will show the first five syllable rules. So open syllable, closed syllable, silent E, controlled R, and consonant LE. So usually I'll go over those five rules and uh, we'll return to them every time we encounter a word with one of these relevant patterns. Um, now sometimes of course a word doesn't obey the traditional phonics and when we encounter that I will make a note. Like for example the word process. Uh, if you break it uh, down into its syllables, it's process. Everybody has an accent relative to another, so I have an accent relative to somebody in Africa, relative to somebody in Russia, and so, so on and so forth. So when I speak, I usually make a note of how I tend to speak and how people within a certain uh, grouping would tend to speak. And I know this overtly crosses into the territory of linguistics, so when I do reach an area I don't know, I'm very ready to admit that I don't know beyond a certain point, but typically uh, there are plenty of patterns that I've learned over my teaching experience, and uh, largely due to morphemes and endings and scenes where some of these roots or prefixes or suffixes uh, revert back to ancient Greek or Latin or whatever the form is. Um, so, in many cases, what I find is very helpful is to look it up on Google, say, and look at the word origin and get a sense of um, what kind of word we're dealing with. But often, for a beginner level with kids, we don't go that far. If I'm going to work with an advanced student, this is something that I might do. Uh, but typically, I like to stick in the realm of uh, these five phonetic rules, and if they don't conform to these rules, I'll provide a very brief explanation so in the example of process, I say process, um, but the O in the first syllable, pra, the syllable rule there, it ends in a vowel. And so if the syllable ends in a vowel, it's uh, rule number one, an open syllable. And an open syllable means that the vowel sound within the syllable is going to be a long sound. So the O should be process. And indeed, some people still speak uh, with this uh, phonetically precise way of saying it. Uh, that's not the way I say it, but I'll at least provide an explanation as to why I say it this way and uh, how other people in different parts of the world say it. Uh, but of course, we don't detract or waste too much of class time deviating in this direction because it's actually peripheral to the class uh, subject matter, typically, especially for an age group uh, as young as primary school level. So that's typically the way I like to proceed, and I hope you enjoyed my children's uh, book reading, Dan's Game. Very fun book.